Despicable Me is back with its sixth installment in this franchise. We got four in the main Despicable Me, and then we got two Minion spinoffs. And after the sixth film in the franchise, I think I'm ready to say... Okay, let, let's let's cut it back just a bit. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing Despicable Me 4. This is about Gru, Lucy, Margot, Edith, and Agnes, who now welcome a new member to the family, Gru Jr., who is intent on tormenting his dad. But Gru faces a new nemesis and Maxme Limal and his girlfriend, Valentina, and the family is forced to go on on the run you know who stars in this you got the steve carrells you got the Kristen wiggs you got the miranda cosgroves but this time around you got joey king will ferrell and sofia vergara all joining the cast as well and overall i wasn't too excited for this one but i've kind of just started going into despicable me movies not that excited for them but hoping to be surprised by them by the end of the day and the last minions movie minions rise of Gru, was actually kind of a big surprise for me i actually quite enjoyed that one is it the most highbrow thing in the world no not not one bit but it was enjoyable and it was funny and i thought the minions usage was perfect in that alongside using Gru and the storyline they were trying to tell there but with despicable me i i feel like this franchise has kind of had an up and down ever since the first minions spinoff where the first two despicable me's specifically the first one really had a great sense of charm and its story and in general, its character arc. And then, of course, it was such a big popular hit that they'd made a second film. And the second film, I actually think, is the best one. But I know that's not, like, the most popular take. I think it's just funny. I think it's hilarious. I think it's bigger than the last as well. The third one I just thought was forgettable. And then, again, I know Minions came out before that. But Minions kind of killed it for me. I just thought there was, again, too many. You, it's It's the whole point that they are a great comedic relief when used in dosage. But when you overuse them or give them their own subplot, it can kill a lot of the vibe. And Despicable Me 3, I can't really remember, to be honest. But Despicable Me 4, it kind of has that same issue where the minions are just used a bit too much and it drags out the story. And it all is well with the story. I know this is an animated kids film. I also think within the story, it sadly kind of falls apart and feels a little bit like a direct-to-video animated sequel that we would have gotten back in like the early 2000s and i just found that this movie was just overall fine i think kids will have a blast with it but i think adults you might be going all right i think i'm done with these minions of sorts but definitely leave your thoughts down below hit that like subscribe button i'm very curious to hear your guys thoughts what is your favorite film in this franchise so far and without further ado, let's dive into the best parts about the film, because I'm about positivity in the film community, and that's where I want to start out with. And awesome, like, the voice cast is just great. They're always great. Steve Carell just has this role down as Gru so great. Kristen Wiig as well, fantastic. And I think, again, their chemistry just works wonders. But the really big shout-outs in here that I actually want to give was Joey King and Will Ferrell. I was surprised that Will Ferrell voiced Max Man. I actually, like, while watching the movie, I could not pinpoint. Like, the voice was familiar, but I was like, who the f hell is that? Who is that? And then when the credits rolled and I saw Will Ferrell, I'm like, well, slap me silly. I didn't expect that. And Joey King as uh, Poppy Prescott, another character that was kind of surprising to me. I thought she was going to be annoying at first, and then kind of the arc they do with her, I actually felt was... A, there was more to it that we could have gotten. And in a way, it brings a little bit of the villainy out of Gru, which I think is something that I actually miss is more of the villain antics in this entire franchise. And I understand character development of some sorts and everything that's kind of gone on, but it's kind of turned more into a spy franchise at this point with a superhero subplot specifically in this one, which I do not think was needed. But that's me going off on a different tangent, staying with the pros again, the voice cast, awesome. The animation specifically in here, I think is actually some of Illumination's best. I still go on par that migration in Super Mario Brothers is probably the best in terms of animation, but a lot of the design, like doing a binge watch of a lot of the Despicable Me movies and then landing on this one, you can definitely see like all the attention to detail that's there. And I know Illumination kind of gets sometimes the cheap end of stuff, but like I have to give credit where credit is due. There is something they do with the animation here that is fun. And I really like the villain in this one. I think the villain's power and like what they're going after is kind of fun. 
Like, uh, genuinely, like, I don't know how much they showed in the trailer, but I was actually kind of surprised when they introduced what this villain can do. And I was like, huh, different, gross, but I'm for it. A lot of people are going to be interested to see that now there's a new member of the family, which is Gru Jr. And I think Gru Jr. does exactly what the baby should do. And it's comedic relief in moments that are needed. And it's kind of funny because you already have the minions. So now adding another baby in here is kind of just surprising to say the least. Honestly, I think those are really my pros. I found a lot of this film to just be fine and forgettable. And to really just dive into my issues, I think one of the things that has just disappointed me soulfully is the fact that a lot of the kids, such as Margot, Edith, and Agnes, I just truly think are left behind. They have their cute moments and some cool little s snippets, if that's what you even want to call them. But there's not enough there, not enough meat, not enough material. And they were posed as some of the, you know, best characters from the start of the franchise. So I think that is one disappointing factor in here is that they're not weaved into the story well enough to even warrant them being here. Alongside that, as you've seen in all the posters, you get these mega minions or super minions or whatever the hell they called them. And I think they have their moments. But again, it all touches down to the minions have one subplot. And our main two characters, Gru and Lucy, have their own subplot going on here. And you have two plots really much working together that eventually like correlate, but not really all too much. And that's where I just go as far as say like there's a mission, but it's a lot of them just kind of trying to survive in the suburbs. But then it changes to like a heist mission and it's really disjointed. And I never felt like I was actually watching a movie with a story. I always felt like I was watching sequences in a neighborhood and it feels like I was, I don't know, like Despicable Me had a random Netflix animated show, like spinoff, to where they had to go into hiding in the suburbs. And I'm seeing different instances of their lives in the suburbs until it leads into something that is actually meaningful and a little bit story focused, which then re relays back to the main focus of the plot of why they left. And then the movie ends. And that was basically it. Um, it just feels very anticlimactic. There's no character progression or character arcs for barely anyone. And I know that's saying a lot for kids films, but you start getting nitpicky when you're not really laughing all too much. And again, ki the kids in my theater were laughing. I just was more, huh, okay. Or, ha ha, that's funny. I'll tell you, like, I promise you, like, my, my genuine appeal towards the minions is still there because I just rewatched the first two and thought it was great. And, you know, I, I just think for me, like, there is something sorefully missing in here. I think a lot of that is just the usage of the minions and the usage of the stories that they're trying to tell. It's appealing to, like, the lowest common de denominator, but also appealing to just children. And again, totally fine, but I'm not a kid anymore. So... With that said, Despicable Me 4, I think, might be the second weakest film in the franchise right above Minions, but is very, very close to that of being the worst. Kids are going to like this. They're going to laugh. They're going to enjoy themselves. And I think maybe I'm just a terrible person who doesn't like these films as much as I used to, but I always go into maybe not as excited but just hopeful that I'm going to enjoy them. And I walked out of this one kind of just feeling like it was a little bit of a mess and a disjointed one that didn't think we really needed it. Like where they were going with the Minions franchise, I was totally fine with. And I didn't think we really needed this one. I didn't think it did much for the characters. And it kind of just felt like one of those random stories that you tell because you have to make the movie because all the Minions movies make so much money. The cast was fun. The animation was fun. Some cool new things to the lore and a cool new villain. But other than that, it does not save the movie. So with all that said, I'm going to give Despicable Me 4 a D+. Really not my jam, but again, I th I'm sure if I had a kid right here, they would probably tell you this is one of the best animated movies of the year. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, until next time, stay classy.